El Nino is getting stronger, and in fact, it could get into the historic category over the next couple of months. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegas in this video. We're going to talk all things El Nino. Of course, it has short-term implications and then long-term implications. If you're watching from the Northeast, we're going to have an update on what the winter could look like for you. We're going to break down the latest state of El Nino, and it, again, it is getting stronger by the day. In terms of the winter, I already kind of already said this a second ago, but this is going to generate the El Nino many storms really from the south all the way up into the northeast. The question is, will it be cold enough? Before we get into this video, I would love to know where you're tuning in from. Post down in the comments, whether it's from the Pacific Northwest, the Desert Southwest, or anywhere across the country or the Caribbean, please post that in the comments. And if you want to stay updated on what could be a wild ride this winter, we got you covered scientifically, meteorologically. Hit that subscribe button for me. We are nerds on this channel, and we are going to talk about the weather at length. So if you love talking about that stuff, you have come to the right place. First, the short term, and then we're going to look at some longer range climate models here. And we're going to do that in kind of real time. Nothing going on Wednesday, but watch what happens tomorrow. And I'm showing you the short term because it tells the story of what is coming long term. Mother Nature is kind of showing the cards, showing her hand right now as to what we believe is going to happen and what is likely going to happen here in terms of the weather pattern. So we're going to start things off on Thursday. And this is kind of another big storm that is generated out of the Rockies, Southern Rockies, and then works its way through the Gulf Coast. And we could even have severe weather in Texas in parts of the uh, Deep South. So I'll show you that outlook in just one second. But here is our system right there as of Thursday. This is likely going to be a common theme not only for this week ahead, but as we get into the rest of winter. So there's Friday. System generates itself and gets all the way up. Too warm this time for the Northeast, for most of the Northeast, for snow. Plus, it's an inland runner anyway. That's not what you would look for, a typical storm track, to get good snow in the Northeast. One thing I want to show for my friends in the Southeast, though, this cold front gets hung up here, and we have more moisture kind of running up that front from the subtropical jet and i'm going to explain all that mumbo jumbo in just a little bit here but nonetheless uh it looks like again we are going to keep things pretty wet and that's going to be again a common theme going forward over the next several months there is the severe weather threat for thursday level three out of five coming our way for suburbs of houston uh, just to the west of us in Lake Charles, although we are in that level 2 out of 5, that slight risk in Lake Charles. Shreveport, we have a shot for severe weather. Same for us in Dallas toward Port Lavaca, just to the east of San Antonio. This is where we could have the combination of uh, some wind shear, some rich gulf moisture kind of combining here to create some uh, nasty thunderstorms through the day on Thursday. So we're going to be watching that for our friends in the Lone Star State, and of course in Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. So that's just kind of the short-term impacts of this El Nino pattern. Now, El Nino is the bigger kind of climate pattern here. It doesn't really create the storms, but it helps to kind of enhance them. And it, with that being around, it really, really shows us this pattern that is what is going to be in. So what I want to show you next is El Nino itself. So these are the sea surface temperature anomaly. And if you haven't seen previous videos of ours... We'll kind of break down what El Nino is, and then we'll get into kind of like the long-range pattern. I'm going to show you some climate models coming up, so stick around for that. If you're with me, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. I would appreciate that. It really does help us out a lot. So here's the deal. Look at all that purple. Those are the sea surface temperatures an anomalies of above 2 degrees Celsius, and in some cases above 3 degrees Celsius, way out here. El Nino is characterized whenever you get the sea surface temperature anomaly in the equatorial Pacific off the coast of Peru at a half a degree Celsius above normal. And that's in that 3.4 region. Scientifically, that's kind of out there. All right, so that is continuing to build. And what that does from a wintertime perspective, when you get that there, it changes the weather patterns around a little bit. And in your typical El Nino pattern, you have a strong subtropical jet, just like what I showed you before, bringing us that rain and transporting that Pacific moisture and those Pacific disturbances right on through the North Gulf Coast, and then eventually up the East Coast and up the Eastern Seaboard. If it's cold enough, that'll follow snow in the winter. So the strong subtropical jet stream is the big calling card of 
El Nino from from U.S. perspective, and that's what's going to be helping to generate the, I think anyway, from really California and then into this region, a colder than normal and wetter than normal winter. Is it going to be cold enough for snow in at least the further north states? That is the question. So I want to kind of show you here, um, and then we're going to go back to that because I, I want to show you the pattern that we are going to look for. And that if you're rooting for snow in the snow-starved northeast, I know, it's been painful. I'll show you the pattern that we want to look for going forward here. But these are at least the precipitation anomalies, and it kind of paints the picture of what I showed you there of a typical El Nino now when it gets into the strong level. And again, it is characterized in the strong level once we start to get that um, two degrees Celsius anomaly and then or before that it's in the historic category once it gets above two degrees Celsius it has only been I believe three times that that's happened 82 83 uh, of course uh, 97 98 and then 15 16 so we could be pushing those deeper in the winter that remains to be seen but regardless look at this all of the green on the map, that is going to be our precipitation anomaly for the month of December. So there you go. Let me move my big head out of the way, I think. Or I'll just screw it up. I don't know if I can move it. But there you go. Look at all the green in California into Nevada. That is that strong subtropical jet blasting some Pacific moisture right on into the state. And then here we go. The continuation of that with that jet riding south. Look at all of that moisture. The anomalies. Again, way above normal there for the southeast. In January, that kind of pattern still holds for us. The question is the Northeast. In February, it kind of backs down a little bit, although I do think the back half of the winter is going to be when the, when the hammer drops. And then look at the anomalies continue. And really, if, these, if this does continue, we're really going to have to watch into February and March when the South starts to really warm up to add some instability. We could have some big-time severe weather events uh, for the back half of winter. And then even into December or January, but it really, February, March, we're going to have to pay close attention uh, in the southeast for severe weather. Now, as a kind of a secondary push, when you get those big nor'easters like that, um, that strong cold fronts that help generate severe weather in the south, the heavy snow is the thing that we would get in the north. So this time around, I showed you we don't have much cold air in the way. Now, next week... This is kind of the pattern that we look for. We call it the Boise Ridge. So there's a ridge of high pressure right here. It's about Boise, Idaho. When we have a ridge of high pressure building over Boise, that's kind of one of the first signs you look for a few days out from a, a big snow event. So we have, that's going to be characterized as a positive PNA for my weather friends that kind of know these oscillations. We like, if you, if you want snow in the Northeast, you want a positive PNA and you want a negative NAO. Those are the two big things. And a negative NAO is going to be characterized by major blocking over Greenland. So this is kind of, if you, we had high pressure here because you want, there's our little dip in the jet stream. You want there to be enough cold coming in. And then you want to have kind of these big areas of low pressure develop east of the Rockies and then really explode down here and then move up and then just blast the 95 corridor, which does not go all the way off the earth as my, as my uh, white line would dry. That would be kind of cool. But that's the pattern that we look for. It's not all there this week, so I don't think we're going to see some big snow. So just, again, be careful what you see because I've seen a, a lot of like hintings again that we're going to get a cataclysmic snowstorm in the 95 corridor. Not, not going to happen. Um, this week, anyway. Deeper in the winter, it's got a possibility, and I know. It's the, I believe it when I see it. And I'm at that point, too, because the pattern has looked right a, a couple of times, and it just hasn't come into fruition. We're going to watch, because, again, we're at least going to have a higher likelihood of a storm being there this year, courtesy of El Nino, as we talked about there, kind of sending that moisture down there, helping to get a storm going. But the question is, will there be cold? And that's what you have to watch. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you found this content helpful, if you enjoy watching the weather, post in the comments what the weather is doing, where you're tuning in from. I'd love to know about it. I'd love to have you on board. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. And we will catch you next time.